All right, now you've got your base done, so it's time to start working on designs for the sides of your clay pot, your coil pot. Um, so you're going to need to choose three designs. Um, you can do more than three, but you need to have at least three different designs um, that you have made by hand building. Um, and so the first design I'm going to show you is a pinwheel. Um, so that's just taking a coil, like I've already rolled out, um, just like you do, you're doing your base, um, except that you're not rolling it to be as long as your base. Um, you don't want it that tall. So I'm going to stop um, so that my, my uh, pinwheels are about two inches. And I build a few of these, keep them out on my uh, table right on my newspaper, and I line them up so that I can make sure that as I'm building a row, I have that row the same size. So I don't want one to get um, taller than the other. So I start by building a few of them um, on my table, laying them side by side. Once I have about four of them in there, um, or four of them built, then I start placing them inside uh, my mold. Okay, So I've already started placing the first four that I made right inside and you can see they're resting directly on the base and they're leaning against the sides um, of the uh, mold as well. So there's no gap in between. So they're resting against the bottom and they're resting against the side. So I'm going to um, place these inside until um, I run out of room so that I have a full complete row before I do any blending. So I'm almost done um, with my row. I've got about one more and hopefully this is going to be about the right size. Looks to be about the right size so it's going to fit in there um, nice and tight. So I've got a full row made. However you can see the um, coil design still. So I need to get rid of this coil design that you can see from the inside and it needs to be smooth in order to make my coil pot stay together. So I need to basically glue these lines together by blending. So I need to push down, I'm going to try to give you a close up view of how this is going to look. I need to not only push down and blend down. Um, so that I'm blending it to the bottom of the base. So it's just taking the first layer of clay and smooshing it um, down so that it's stuck to the base layer. Um, but I'm also going to blend these side to side so that, number one, I'm not going to see any of the design anymore. So all the design's going to be gone. And it's just going to be smooth on the inside. Okay. Um, and that way I know it's going to stay together. And it's a little hard to do this when it's on an angle, so I'm going to continue blending um, in the correct position. Now as I'm blending and as you blend, um, you want to make sure that you don't push too hard as you're blending. Your clay should be nice and soft so you don't have to press too hard um, because the harder you press, um, as you're trying to blend your lines together, the more that you are not going to see the design on the outside. Okay, so your outside of your pot is where you should see the designs, and the inside of your pot should be where it's all glued together. So it's all blended and smooth. Okay, and I'll show you what that's going to look like in just a minute. And so I don't start blending until I have the full row made first and that's when I start blending that row together. Again pushing gently from side to side um, and top to bottom so I blended it to the bottom, the base, um, and then I blended them side to side all the way around. So this one's blended to that one, blended to that one, all the way around. And you can't see the bottom um, where I placed them on top because they're all smooth together now. So the inside of your pot will look nice and smooth just like this one does, whereas on the outside you're going to be able to see the designs. Okay, So on the outside 
um, here is where those pinwheels will show um, when I take them out of your bucket, okay? But on the inside as you're building, um, it's going to be nice and smooth um, where you don't see any designs. And this one's hard to see because it's a dark color. Uh, so let's talk about another design that you can do besides pinwheels. Um, you can certainly do a row of polka dots, okay, or coins. Um, and again, make sure you're paying attention to the right thickness. So this is not showing you how thick your coin is. Um, the side is where you can tell if it's going to be thick enough. So you still have to measure the right thickness um, before you place it into your um, container. So coins is something you can do that's easy, just taking a little ball of clay, rolling it, and then just gently pushing down to flatten it a little bit. Um, you could also do squares, the same method, just rolling out a coin first and then just um, gently pushing the sides to flatten them out. Um, you can make a teardrop, um, same method except for pinching and pulling towards the top to get a point so you have the teardrop look. Um, you could also take that, flip that upside down and roll your um, pinky finger over the top and start to create the shape of a heart. Um, so you could turn it into the shape of a heart instead of using a teardrop, okay? Um, so that's another thing you can do. Um, you could also work with a coil and then um, take your coil and bend it. And of course you wouldn't do this um, in mid-air like I am. You would do this on the table, but you could bend it back and forth um, which is going to create a different look as well. You can twist pieces together. Um, so here's what that up and down one looks like. This is twisting two pieces together. Um, and you can also do a flat solid line as well. Okay, So those are just a few designs. You can certainly um, use your imagination and create some new designs that I haven't even shown you. Um, the other option you have is to place negative space within your coil pot so that you could actually have um, this be used for a candle that will show the light coming through all the, the um, holes where the negative space is. Okay, So that is an option. If you end up doing a um, pot that has negative space in it, much like this one is, uh, the only thing that I ask is wherever you have a negative space row, like right here, um, you always want to put a solid line, not a decorative line, just one solid line above that because that's going to hold your negative places um, intact so that they don't fall apart. Okay. When you blend a negative space row, you still have to blend up and down. Okay, So you still have to blend down, um, but you can't blend side to side. There's nothing to blend there because it's a hole. Okay, So that's a little bit of a different process. So you can choose to have negative um, spaces in your coil pot, or you can choose to make it solid like this one is. Okay, up to you. Uh, but as you're building, you can build up to the top um, of your bucket, and you can go one row higher than the top. But that's about it. Any higher than that, and it starts to fall over. So you can go one row higher than the top of your bucket. At the end of the day or the end of the hour, let's say you've made these pieces, but you haven't had time to get them inside um, and blended. Okay, so I'm going to take this, I'm just going to set that right down um, inside my container that I'm um, currently making. I'm going to keep all my little shapes because I want to use those too. And I'm just going to store them right inside the bucket. If I have any extra clay pieces that I haven't uh, made anything with, um, but they're still usable. I'm going to just crunch them up to a ball so that they stay nice and wet for me to use tomorrow. Place that right inside as well. And I'm going to lift up the sides of the bag, twist and push gently, very gently. And then I take this, put it in storage. My newspaper is going to get folded towards the center like a present so that all the clay dust stays inside. This goes in the recycle bin or the garbage. Um, and then I'm going to sponge off my table from any leftover clay dust um, and make sure it's dry. 
and my sponges are under my sink and my paper towel dispenser is right next to my sink as well. And that's it. Um, when you actually would finish your clay pot um, at the very end of our time, let's say I'm done with mine, um, the extra clay pieces get turned in um, and then I'm going to use a pencil and I'm gently going to touch on the bottom and the base right inside and I'm going to scratch my first and last initial and my class hour. So I'm just going to write a number one if I'm first hour and number eight if I'm eighth hour. Um, so I'm just going to have my first and last initial and my class hour in there. And that's it.